And I'm going to be speaking today about activating your faith. Activating faith. Or if you want to call it something else, living by faith. How do we do that? And so I'm so excited. Thank you, Marv. I thought you were Marari in the first service because I wasn't looking directly at you. I just heard you. But you're an amazing man of God. And God's hand is on you. It's been on you since you were a little boy. And as you continue to obey God in the good times and in the hard times, what He's got for you is far beyond what you could have dreamt up for yourself. So we love you. We're behind you. So glad you're part of our church. Amazing. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to get right into the Word this morning. And um, it's such an honor and a privilege to be here. I feel like the big sister who's come home for Christmas lunch. So thank you for just opening your hearts up um, to this Word today. And If you are ready to receive from the Lord this morning, not just go through the motions, but really you want to encounter Jesus for yourself today, would you just open your hands up just to say, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to receive. It's hard to receive from the Lord with folded arms or closed hands. So that's why we just do it as an act of faith. But Lord, we thank you so much that we can come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for your church, Lord, that you are building. Thank you that you're at work within us, pruning us and making us more like your son, Jesus. And Lord, today, I pray your blessing upon your word. Holy Spirit, would you take this word? Would you divide it a thousand different ways this morning? Would you use it to speak powerfully into the lives of every single one of us? And Lord, I declare that this word falls on good soil, on hearts that are open. And Lord, would you bless it and add it and increase it in Jesus' mighty name. And all the good looking people said, Amen, amen. Well, you can grab your seats. As you grab your seat, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm happy to sit next to you. Turn to your second choice. Say, okay, I'm happy to sit next to you as well. Fantastic. Thank you, worship team. Andre, good to see you, bro. You're still here. I love that. George, I saw George as well. George is still here. Amazing. What legends, building God's house. So activating faith, living by faith. And this is uh, something I have done in the past and feel like I'm still doing. <laughs> and so it's something that is not a one-off. Activating your faith or living by faith is not just a, a one-time thing in your life. It is day by day, week by week, month by month. And God is calling us as a people to live by faith not to live by our circumstances, not to live by our own understanding or our own best ideas, but to live by faith. So we're gonna dive into that this morning. But in 2010, I was working at an awesome Christian ministry and it was about January of 2010. And I strongly began to feel the Lord nudging me and calling me to leave my job where I was at and go into high schools and minister to young people. And I really wrestled with this because although my salary wasn't large, we definitely needed it. And I had two school-going, age, school-age going children and desperately needed my salary. It's not like we could have done without it. And so I wrestled with the Lord for months about this because I was like, Lord, I don't know if you've heard, but they don't actually pay people to do that. You know, this is something I'd have to do for free and I would need to rely on people to sponsor me or donate to me or support me financially in some way. And so I'm wrestling with the Lord about this, figuring out how are we gonna do without my salary? How am I gonna raise money? And um, I bumped into this amazing woman of God and she said to me, hey, how's it going with your whole stepping out in faith thing God's called you to do? I'm like, it's going really great. It's good, I, I'm almost there. I'm just waiting for the provision and then I'm ready to go. And what she said next shook me to my core. She said to me, if you're waiting for the provision, that's not faith. Everyone say, yeah. And so that rocked me on the inside. I'm like, okay, that was God's word to me. So needless to say, I resigned um, my job. And from the 1st of April, I went out to minister to young people in schools. Started out at Bosman's Dumb High. And that whole month of April, no money came in. No support. No one donated. No one gave me a love offering. No one did anything except pray for me which I do appreciate, but in hindsight, I can't eat prayers, need to eat food. And so I walked by faith that entire month of April, and I said, Lord, I know you've called me to do this, because for months, all I kept seeing is the scripture of Peter stepping out of the boat, stepping out in faith, stepping out into the unknown, and I knew God was calling me to do this, so I had to just walk by faith. 
And can I tell you, on the 1st of May, my first donation came in. And from there, it just began to come in slowly but surely. 500 rand here, 100 rand there, 600 rand here. And for almost two years, the Lord sustained us month by month just through little offerings like that. If we're going to clap, let's do it all together. There we go. My, oh, isn't that so much better? And the reason I'm telling you that story is to tell you that God is calling us as a people that we don't walk by what we can see. We have to walk by what God has called us to do. And I want to encourage us all that God has called each and every one of us here today to something. And maybe it's not quitting your job like it was for me, but you, you know what it is for you. God has a plan and a call on each and every one of our lives, and he's calling us to walk by faith and not by sight. First, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Why does God tell us that? We walk by faith, not by what we see, not by our circumstances. Why? Because our human nature, it's easy to walk by what we can see. It's easy to walk by what we know. It's easy to walk by what we can conjure up or what we can imagine. But God is saying, no, 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 you don't walk according to your circumstances. You walk according to faith of what God has called you to do and what he's put on your life to accomplish for his glory. But it's our human nature to want to have all of our ducks in a row. <coughs> Excuse me, before we follow what God is asking us to do. It's human nature. But there's wisdom in planning. There's wisdom in planning. But when God has spoken, everyone say, when God has spoken. When God has spoken and the time has come, we have to walk by what God has said and not by what we can see around us. And I wish I could tell you that that's the only time God asked me to do something crazy and to step out in faith, to step out into the unknown, not knowing what's next. But in 2006, oh, sorry, in 1995, my family, we lived, sorry, my throat. Excuse me. <clears throat> Everyone say, <clears throat> in 1995, my family, I saw my family follow a call from God to move from Monkwell Strand to Dallas, Texas. And then in 2006, my husband and I heard the call of God to move from Arizona to Cape Town. Then in 2008, we heard the word of God call us to plant ourselves in Hillsong Church. And then in 2019, we heard the call of God to go to Kenya and help establish our church there. Then in 2021, we heard the call of God to come back to South Africa and plant ourselves in Somerset West. I wish I could tell you, church, that this is a one-time thing. But God is calling us to a life of faith, to be obedient to the call of God, whatever that looks like for you. And there's some people sitting here, and today it's a, it's a massive step of faith you need to take. It's a massive saying yes to God that's going to change your whole life. That's some of you today. There's others of you today, it's a small step, just a small step of obedience. It's just taking that next step or picking up that phone or going to talk to your boss or putting that offer on, on a house or believing God for healing. It's just, maybe it's a small step, but God is calling us this morning not to walk by what we can see, but to walk by what God is speaking into our lives. So some of you might be saying, oh, Wendy, that's easy for you to say. You've lived by faith. You have seen God come through. You're on the other side of that. Or maybe some of you are saying, but faith is so difficult to grasp because it's so intangible. It feels like we don't really know what faith is and um, it's out of our ability to understand fully. So allow me to sum faith up simply for all of us like this. Faith is standing on the promise before you can see it. Faith is simply standing on the promise of God before you can see it. And you know, in, in that time where uh, we were living by faith, and I trusted God for my income every single month. I, I wish I could tell you that it was always easy. I wish I could tell you we never lacked. I wish I could tell you I never had a moment's doubt in those two years that God was going to provide for me. I wish I could tell you that. But I can tell you it got real sometimes. And I remember um, I was a youth leader, and we had had youth here on a Friday night, and 
I'd gotten home, and how many of you know you're hungry after a night at youth? And I opened up the pantry, and all that was there was a can of beans. And I thought, okay, this is interesting. I'm like, this has just gotten real. But you know, when God had called me to step out in faith like that and leave my job in 2010, I remember saying, okay, Lord, this is between you and me. If I'm ever in lack or if I ever need anything, I'm not going to tell anyone. I'm not going to tell my family. I'm not going to tell my friends. Lord, it's, this is between you and me because I didn't want people feeling sorry for me. I wanted the Lord to do what he said he was going to do. And so not even my family would know that we had run out of food. And I saw that can of beans in the cupboard and I was like, well, Lord, here we are. And I thought, you know what? When the kids wake up in the morning, I can just, I just rallied my faith. You know, I was like, I'll just say, um, we'll make the beans on the stove and it'd be like a cowboy breakfast, you know, like back in Texas, um, cowboys ate, ate baked beans and we'll just make it a cowboy breakfast thinking, I'm not sure where food is going to come from after we finish this can of beans. Well, the next morning I was up, thankfully my children sleep, sleep in, they're late sleepers except for my smallest one who's still needing to get that anointing, I'm praying for her, but my eldest two slept in and so they weren't awake yet, but I heard a knock on the door and I opened the door and it was, whew, it was a lady whose child came to the youth ministry. I knew her, but not well enough that she would know that I was living by faith or definitely would not know that our cupboards were empty. And she said, oh, I'm so sorry to bother you. She said, I feel really silly. I was at the grocery store and I was getting some groceries, but I really felt the Lord say, I must bring you this. She's like, maybe you don't need it. I don't know, but I knew I had to bring this to you. And I looked down and there was bags and bags of groceries. I'm talking about cereal, meat, sandwich meat, chips for the kids' school, Oros, you name it, God had provided. And so that day I realized, listen, we don't walk by, by sight. We walk by faith in the God who calls us, who is faithful, who is provider, who is healer, who transforms, who redeems. And I don't know who this is for today, but I want to remind you, if anyone's ever been healed, give me a wave. If God's ever healed you. Look at all this. Has God ever provided for anyone? Has God ever brought breakthrough in your life? Has God ever set anyone free in this place? Has God ever healed your marriage? Has God ever brought your kids back home that were far from God? Listen, I don't know who this is for today, but the word of God today is he is the same God. He is still the healer. He is still the redeemer. He is still the miracle worker. He is still the God of the breakthrough. He is still the way maker. He is still the marriage restorer. He is still the God who did it before. He will and can and is doing it again in Jesus' name. All you got to do is stop walking by sight and start walking by faith. And the God who did it before is the God who's going to do it again. Amen. Amen. You know, during this time as well, I'll never forget the electricity meter, prepaid electricity, God bless it. It said 0 0.3 units. Now that's not going to get us anywhere. <laughs> But my husband's salary wasn't going to come in for another three days. Oh, I feel the Lord so strongly here. Sorry, guys. Ooh. If it hits you, man, I got tissues in my pocket. <laughs> Otherwise, you're on your own. I've got no tissues. So I'm on my own too. <laughs> and I remember looking at that electricity meter. I'm like, Lord Jesus, the God who provides. And I just spoke. God is our provider over that electricity meter. Will you believe me if I tell you? I promise you, as the Lord is my witness, thank you, buddy, that electricity meter did not move from 0 0.3 units for three days. I kid you not. For three days. Until my husband's salary came in and then the lights went off and we walked over to the gas station and recharged the electricity. Can I tell you that I was supposed to go speak at a school in the southern suburbs. They'd invited me to their assembly to share the word of God. And I was speaking to my mom on the phone the night before. It's about 8.30 at night. She said, oh, so what do you have going tomorrow? I'm like, oh, I'm going to the school in the southern suburbs. I'm going to 
preach the gospel to young people. And she said, do you, do you have everything you need? So I said, well, I can't lie to you, mom, but uh, my petrol's on empty. The light came on already, um, but it's okay. I, I'm, it's going to be fine. She, she was actually really annoyed. She goes, what? How are you going to get to the school? I'm like, I don't know, mom. Either, you know, just miraculously that petrol's going to get me to the southern suburbs, or I'm going to break down the side of the road and someone's going to come with a gas tank. But either way, I'm going to get to that school. She's like, no, Wendy, you must tell me these things. I'm your mother. I could have gone to the bank today and done a transfer to help you. I was like, mom, this is between me and the Lord. I told the Lord, I'm not telling anyone when I'm in need. He is, he's called me to do this and he will provide. Now, would you believe me if I told you that while we were still talking on the phone, I get an SMS and it said, Absa Bank, notice of deposit, 1,000 rand blessing. Now, I know that's not my mom because she doesn't even have internet banking. I, she was not her. Someone, to this day, I don't know who it was, deposited at that moment 1,000 rand into my account that I could drive straight to the petrol station in the morning, put in petrol, and go and preach the word of God. He is the miracle-working God. We walk by faith and not by sight because our faith in God activates the supernatural. He's so able. He's so able. He's so able. So we're going to look today four things. How do you activate your faith? How do you live by faith? And these are things you can put into practice right now. But again, it's not a once-off thing. It's going to be things you can put into practice month after month, year after year, I'm still putting these things into practice. Number one, to activate your faith, number one, you've got to get a word from God. Every time God has called us to do something extraordinary, it came with a word from God. And do you know that in Psalm 139 verse 6, it says this, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Do you know that God has the most incredible plans and purposes for your life? Do you know that he dreams about you? And then he writes down in his book, do you know heaven is full of books, and he's written down in his book the plans and the purposes that he has for each and every one of you. And he doesn't write it in pencil because he's not sure if you're going to be able to make it. He has so much faith in his ability through you to accomplish what he's called you to do, that he's written it out in ink. He's ordained days for you. He's written out amazing things for you to do in your life. And so when we walk around going, oh, I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with my life. I just don't know what decision to make. I just don't know if I should do this or do that. Oh, I just don't know what's going on. Can I encourage us this morning? God knows. God knows what's next. God knows what he has for you. God knows what step you need to take. God knows what decision you need to make. And he's waiting there going, man, if there's someone would just ask me, I've got it all right here. And spending time with him, reading the word, praying, getting around other believers, you will get a word from God. You got to get a word. Find out what he's calling you to do, and his word will tell you. The second thing we have to do to activate our faith or live by faith is not just get a word, but obey the word. And this is where it gets tricky. We all love a word from God. Yes, Lord, give me a word. We want prophetic words. We want scriptures to speak to us. We want a friend to call us and give us a word. Getting the word is awesome, but that's just step one. Step two, you got to obey the word. you got to do what God's calling you to do. It wasn't enough that God had called me to go into schools and reach young people. I had to obey that word for God's provision to be activated in my life. James chapter 2, verse 26. It says, For as the human body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works of obedience is also dead. Thank you, Adele. You're amazing. Thank you, thank you. Some tea. Cheers, guys. Anyone need some tea? Ah, that's brilliant. Thank you. Faith without works of obedience is also dead. You see, it's our our obedience to God that is a catalyst for the supernatural things of God. Our obedience, everyone say our obedience, is a catalyst 
for the supernatural things of God. See, many of you are sitting here and you're like, okay, Wendy, that's good. God has spoken to me, but I'm just waiting on him to move. And God's like, no, 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 you move, then I'll move. And we're like, no, 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 Lord, you don't understand. You move first because you're God, and then I'll move. And God's like, no, 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 you move, and then I'll move. Every time God has moved in the lives of people, you read it all throughout Scripture, they had to take the step of faith. They had to obey the Word of God. Then God came in and did what only God can do. Some of you are sitting here and you're like, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Can I tell you? (laughs) You don't have to wait on the Lord. You have to obey the Lord. Take that step of faith. And then you will see God come through in ways you never dreamed possible. Amazing. So you've got to get a word, obey the word. Number three, you've got to walk in the word. You've got to walk in the word. Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 to 30. This is this beautiful story of Peter walking on the water. And he says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, everyone say he saw. When he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. You see, I want to remind us today that Peter is a normal human being like you and I. Yet, Jesus said, come. He had faith. He got a word from God. He stepped out of the boat. He obeyed the Lord. But then it says that he saw the wind, and he became afraid. He didn't walk by faith. He walked by sight, and he began to drown. Now, I want to encourage us that, yes, walking on the water is the most impossible thing we can probably imagine, but Peter was a human being like you and I. But just as impossible it seems in our minds for Peter to step out of a boat and put his feet on water and being able to walk on it, for some of you, you're facing a situation just as impossible as it was for Peter to walk on water. But can I encourage us this morning, Jesus is saying, come. Come, take that step. I'm waiting for you. Come, I'm the provider. Come, I'm the healer. Come, I'm the miracle worker. Come, I'm the marriage restorer. Come, I'm the chain breaker. Come, I'm the redeemer. Come, I'm the healer. Peter stepped out of the boat by faith, but he allowed circumstances to be louder than the word from Jesus, and he began to sink. So we can step out of the boat in faith, keeping our eyes on Jesus, but then we've got to keep walking in the word that he has spoken over you. I believe if Peter had just kept walking, he would have continued to walk on water. We've got to keep walking in that word, church. That's why people sometimes start out strong living by faith, or they start out strong being obedient, or they take that step of faith, or they step out into what God's called them to do, but then the wind. Everyone say the wind. The wind and the waves and the things we can see come. And they can scream at us louder than the word from God. And many people end up sitting back down because it was too hard. I just didn't have what it takes. No, you had to not just step out and obey. You had to keep walking in the word, regardless of the circumstances around you. We walk by faith and not by sight. So finally, once you've gotten the word from God, once you've obeyed the word from God, and now you're walking in the word from God. What do you do when the going gets tough? What do you do when sickness comes, when lack comes, when hurt and pain and disappointment and discouragement comes? What do you do when betrayal comes? What do you do when injustice comes? What do you do to keep walking by faith and not drown in your circumstances like Peter did? Well, number four, you got to declare the word. So you've got to get a word, obey the word, walk in the word. But then when stuff gets tough, everyone say stuff gets tough. You've got to declare the word of God over your circumstances. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says it so amazingly. It says, for the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. That's what this is right here. It's not just words on a page. This is the living, breathing, active 
word of God. Now, it doesn't do much good when the words just stay on the page. But the words in the mouth of one who believes, this becomes what the Bible calls the sword of the Spirit. This becomes a weapon in the hand of one who believes. God's word in your mouth, backed by faith, has the ability to move mountains, the Bible says. The Bible says, if you believe, nothing will be impossible for you and for me. So why do we live in such impossible situations? Could it be that no one's declaring the word of God? No one's using their sword of the spirit to break through circumstances and command things to change at the power of the word of Jesus. You know, I just faced this a few months ago. We had one of those months. You know, those months where everything that can go wrong does go wrong. Anyone had any, any of those months? Yes. And so this happened a few months ago. And, you know, every month, faithfully, as our salary comes in, we immediately do an EFT and we give to the Lord our tithe, 10% of our income. It's what's due to him. But then about the next week, our washing machine broke. That's just a small expense, isn't it? It's just a smidgen of the budget. I was like, whoa, what are we going to do? We don't have money for a new washing machine, and I am not about to hand wash in the bath. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, God bless you if you do that. I'm like, mm-mm, Lord. That is not my portion. Then the car window got smashed. Then my son's car broke down. Then the roof started leaking. And I was like, oh, Lord Jesus. So I had a meeting with the Lord. I called a meeting, and I said, Lord, let's chat. You know that tithe I paid over at the beginning of the month? Now, it turns out, see, what had happened was I need that money back. <laughs> so if we can just work out a payment plan or something, I'll give it back to you, Lord, but, but I need it now. And I felt the Lord stir my heart and say to me this, when last did you declare my word over your finances? I was like, well, I don't, I don't think I've ever done that, Lord. <laughs> and so you know what I did? I looked up the verses, two of them. And I went to my living room early one morning with my Bible in my hand. It's just something happens when you just start doing this, right? When you start pacing, and you just start doing this. And I said, Lord, your word says in Malachi chapter 3 that if I bring my tithe into your house, that you will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that I cannot keep to myself and that you would rebuke the devourer for my sake. Lord, I don't know if you've noticed, but the devourer be devouring. Would you rebuke him now in Jesus' name? Lord, your word says in 2 Corinthians that you give seed to the sower and bread for food. Well, Lord, I've sowed my seed into your house. Now, Lord, we need bread for food. So would you go ahead and begin to move according to your word. Would you believe me if I told you that within seven days of pacing, shaking my Bible at the Lord, more than our tithe was returned to us from several different sources. People called, oh, you have a refund. Oh, you overpaid. Oh, there's interest due back to you. Oh, hey, I forgot to pay you for this. Someone else called and said, I've been sitting on this for two weeks, but I know I have to do this. I'm putting a deposit in your account right now. Don't know if you need it or not, but God said to do it. More than our tithe came back to us within seven days when we activated the word of God, the powerful, living, effective, alive word of God. So you got to declare the word of God. And you can do this yourself. The worship team can join me. You can do this yourself, church. If you don't know scriptures off by heart, Google them. Google's got them all. And whatever you're facing, search some scriptures and begin to declare it over your situation, over your marriage. Me, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord over your children who are far from God. Lord, your word says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they shall not depart from it. If you need healing, Lord, in Isaiah, it says, by your stripes, I am healed. If you need favorite work, Lord, your word says in Deuteronomy, I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. I'm the head only and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. You begin to speak the word of God, even over your suburb. 
Man, in Isaiah, I read this, Isaiah 32, it says, My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. You speak that over Edgemi, over Summer Greens, over Bordesach, over Valchelechen, over Camps Bay. Wherever you are, you speak the word of God. Even over our beloved nation, we say South Africa. The word of God says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 12 that all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord. Come on, the word of God, declare it. It'll change things in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't you stand to your feet, church? The word of God is alive. We can declare it over what we see and what we face. And we will see these promises become real in our lives. To activate your faith, to live by faith, you gotta get a word from God. Then you gotta obey that word. Then you gotta keep walking in the word. And when stuff gets tough, you declare the word of God. You know, as I was preparing for today, I. Ask the Lord what He wanted to say to all of us that are here. And I heard Him say this. There are many sitting here today who have received a word, a promise, an instruction, or a call from God. But you've been sitting and waiting, some of you, for years, for God to do something before you'll step out and do what God has called you to do. Many of you have been waiting on God, but the truth is, He's waiting on you. And like it says in James 2 verse 26, faith without works of obedience is dead. And so I really wanna pray over people today before we go. I'm really praying for an activation of faith, to step out of the boat, to do what God has called you to do. For some of you, it's a big life-changing step of faith. For others, it's simply obedience, to talk to someone, to forgive someone, to share your faith with someone. For others, it's having the courage to let go of things that God is speaking to you about. But whatever it is, we're gonna pray. And I believe God is gonna release an activation today, a new boldness and a courage to take Him at His word, to step out into the unknown, standing on the promise of God that you are yet to see. Can I pray for you for that? If that's anyone in this place today, would you just slip up your hand to say, Wendy, that's me. I need an activation of faith, a new courage, a new boldness to step out. For some of you, it's big life-changing steps. For others of you, it's just small steps of obedience. But whatever it is, there's an activation gonna be released right now. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you that your word is true and we stand on the promise of your word and we'll keep walking until we see it. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I release an activation of faith. That faith would activate. That faith would rise right now in the hearts of your people. Father, we release a new courage, a new boldness in Jesus' name to to take huge steps, life-changing steps of faith and also tiny steps of obedience. Lord, would you move right now in the hearts of people? Would you release fresh courage, fresh boldness? Activate our faith, Lord that we'd get a word from you, that we'd obey that word, that we'd walk in that word. And Lord, that you'd equip us to declare that word and see circumstances come into alignment. Your word brings your will. And we will speak that over our families, over our workplaces, over our schools, over our suburbs, over our children, over our marriages, over our economy, over this nation, over this continent, until we see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Before we go this morning, we never close any of our services without just giving people an opportunity to evaluate their relationship with Jesus. And so today, maybe there's many of you here and you've got your own relationship with Jesus, you're born again, you've given your lives to Jesus, that's awesome. But maybe there's people here this morning who haven't. And I wanna pray for you this morning. I'm not asking you if you go to church, I'm not asking you if you read the Bible. I'm not even asking you if you believe in Jesus. The Bible says demons believe there's only one God and they tremble. 
The question this morning is, do you have your own personal relationship with Jesus? Do you walk with Him? Do you talk with Him? Do you know that your sins are forgiven? And do you know that if you cross into eternity that you would spend it with Him forever? If you cannot confidently say yes to that question, friend, this moment is for you. Or maybe there's people here and in the past you've walked with God, you've had a relationship with Jesus, but if you're honest this morning, you, you turned away and you feel so far from Him this morning. Friend, this moment is for you as well. And the Bible says today is the day of salvation and Jesus says, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. And if anyone would open up, I would come in and have fellowship with Him. That's the invitation this morning. So I'm gonna ask you right where you are just to close your eyes in a moment of privacy. And I wanna just pray with people this morning who would say, Wendy, I need my own relationship with Jesus. Or I need to come back into right relationship with Him. And I'm gonna count to three. I'm gonna ask you when I get to three, if you need me to pray with you this morning, if you wanna be included in this prayer, you just slip up your hand right where you are. And we're gonna pray with you where you're standing. One, God loves you so much that He orchestrated for you to be in this moment today. Two, have the courage to say yes to Jesus. Open up your heart to Him and let Him come in and save you. Three, slip up your hand if you say, yes, Wendy, that's me. I need to give my life to Jesus. I need my own relationship with Jesus. Slip up your hand right where you are and we're gonna pray. Thank you. Thank you, I see that hand. Thank you there in the back. Thank you here in the middle. Thank you, thank you. Thank you over here. Thank you over here. In the balcony, thank you. Hands going up everywhere, I see that hand the third balcony, people saying yes to Jesus. I don't wanna miss anyone in the overflow, online. Thank you, I see that hand. Thank you, I see that hand. Anyone else before we pray? The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Thank you, sir, I see that hand. Thank you, ma'am. We're gonna pray all of this together as a church family. We're gonna pray this with you. And if your hand is raised, you simply pray this from your heart to God. Say, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying for me. And right now, I turn away from my sin. I turn away from my old way of living. And I turn to you. Jesus, would you wash me clean? Would you save me? And would you make me a new creation? And I will live for you, Lord, all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's congratulate so many people this morning saying yes to Jesus. And you know, that decision isn't the end, it's simply the beginning. And I made that decision at 19 years of age and it's changed my entire life. And that decision, as I said, is just the beginning of opening up a conversation between you and the Lord to journey with Him and build your relationship with Him. And as a church, we'd love to help you with that. And we've got this for you. It's our 21 day good news guide and it represents the next 21 days of walking with Jesus. And our team will have these at the, at the end of the service. Please would you receive this as a gift from our church to you and just to help you on your journey to grow deeper in your walk with God. Amen, amen. Well, before we go this morning, church, I just wanna say thank you so much for being in the house of God today. As I said, I feel like the older sister who's come home for Christmas lunch, but can I encourage you? I've been part of this church since 2008 and planting ourselves in Hillsong, South Africa has been the very best thing me and my family have ever done. You know, my marriage is different because we've planted ourselves here. I've got three children, two of them are grown now that were raised in this house, serving Jesus, loving Jesus. Our destinies were changed in this place. And I wanna encourage you that the soil of this place reaps the harvest of what I've just said now. And I believe God is calling people here today to get off the fence and plant yourself in the house of God. And I know that as you do that, our testimony will be your testimony because what is in the soil of this house is strong marriages, destinies being fulfilled, children serving God, Nations being saved. That's what's in the soil of this house. And I want to encourage you, church. Throw yourself in. Be in church every Sunday. Join a group. Serve on a team. Just throw yourself in 
and watch what God will do as you plant yourself in His house and in His kingdom. You will reap a harvest that you couldn't have dreamt of on your best day. All right, so thank you, church. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. God bless.